So welcome everyone. We're so happy you are here. This is a super, super special Monday night because I have the most amazing guest today, which I'm just going to gobble her up. She's so just lovely, amazing. I've been gushing over her for months now, but now definitely all this week getting ready for today. And um, it's just so exciting because she is just such an inspiration to anyone our lover, not our lover. She is a breath of fresh air. She is so humble, so loving, and her being and her art just like radiates love and light. And we're really going to get into that about how art, you know, really speaks to us, touches us, and heals us. And that's really what this is going to be about. But we want to learn more about Dr. Sharp because her story is just also amazing. It gives me chills. I just got chills um, to really learn all how she started, where is she now, the amazing things she's done. I mean, we're just really going to get into it and you're just going to be in awe and we're going to share some of her art uh, pieces that she has at her home, which is like an art gallery in itself. It's amazing. And some of the other ones we're going to share on this video call today and that way you can kind of see it, feel it. Um, to me, I really feel art before you know, I feel it, that I, I see it, and I know it, and so hopefully you get to experience some of this today. So if you don't know me, I'm Diana Londoño. I'm a urologist in Los Angeles. I'm also the founder of Physician Coach Support, which is a free and confidential platform for any physician that wants to come and get support, free and confidential, again, from a peer that is also life coach, and you can just go to physiciancoachsupport.com and make an appointment, again, confidential. We're there to support you with anything that may be troubling you. So please check it out. Um, and so we're here, again, promoting, inviting physicians that are doing amazing things inside, outside of medicine and sharing their stories to really help to uplift us, get us out of burnout, just really make us feel alive and happy and joyful. And I really think Dr. Sharp encompasses this 100%. And I'm just so happy she's here. I'm going to share a little bit. She's going to tell us a little bit more about all her life. But she really, you know, grew up actually in Korea. And she really loved art, you know, when she was probably born. She was really something that she loved. And she came to the United States at age 16. And she didn't speak any English at that time. She really just came and really, you know, a powerful immigrant story. I mean, I have a similar one. I was 12 when I came and I didn't speak English, but you were here at 16, which is a lot more challenging when you're a little older. And she really not only came, but she just tore this place apart and thrived and not went to like some little school. She went to Yale for her training for both medical school and residency, which is hands down amazing. And she became a very successful, you know, physician. And then, you know, she really is going to tell us how she transitioned to being an artist and balancing now medicine and art and how successful and amazing she's been. So I really just want to uh, welcome you and just really thank you for being here and tell us really more a little bit of how this began. I kind of touched on your story of coming to the U.S., but tell us more, Dr. Trump, how you know, when you were in medicine, how did art sort of weave into your life, uh, creating, painting, or any of it, or even music, because you have this beautiful piano behind you. How did it all come and join and mesh in your life as you were going through training? So art was my original passion that I wanted to become an artist uh, since I was a child. And then uh, I had to suppress that for a long time to get through a medical training and all that. And at some point I couldn't bury it down anymore because it was my passion to come out. And so sometime after I established my practice, I started taking art classes uh, whenever I could when, you know, while practicing medicine, raising two children. And uh, I started doing group shows and then eventually solo shows and now shows in the international level. And, you know, medicine uh, supports art and art supports medicine. And so it's been a really win-win uh, journey for me. And I love doing both. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. You know, you had two kids, not just you had two kids. I mean, then you also were you're telling me you you know, taught them piano. I mean, you're really, you know, infusing art and, you know, the creative uh, arts in their life as well. And being a busy mom and physician and all the roles that you had, and you really were able to find that time to, you know, follow your passion that you always loved. Like you made that commitment to make time for it, no matter how busy you were. So 
how did you, I mean, I know it was probably not inside of you, like, I want to follow my passion, which was art, but how did you get to a point to make that decision? I'm going to take that class. I'm going to make time for that class. Like, how did that come about? Because I feel a lot of physicians always feel guilty. They get the mommy guilt or they get the doctor guilt to not follow their passions and, you know, really nurture them. So how did you one day come up to that decision? Was that easy? Was it just, I got to do it? How did it work? Well, when I decided going to medicine, uh, I knew that at some point that I'll be doing both. Okay. That, you know, art is in my DNA. I had to do it. Um, <laughs> but it was bottled up for so long. And um, it was just a matter of time that I had to, I had to start doing it. And I, just little by little, I started doing it. And with the group shows and the solo shows, um, and eventually it led to where I am. And I am really enjoying being a physician artist. Tell us what it means now where you are today, because, you know, are you still practicing full-time medicine, part-time? Like, how did your even physician life change? Is it the same as it was, you know, uh, a few years back? Because now you're you're busy. I mean, you're saying you, you, you know, not only a few shows here, there's sometimes some years you were like 20 shows and you're totally international. We'll talk about shows coming up for you. But, you know, tell me more about this, because I think that's fascinating. So uh, it, it, it didn't just, just happen. It's sort of like, you know, how do you, uh, it, it's sort of like a parenting. You, you grow with, with the child at the different stages. So I, I grew uh, as my art expanded, I grew as an artist and as, as a physician. And uh, it's been a, a very interesting journey. Uh, it's been a challenging, it's been growing. I've met a lot of people, wonderful people on, along the way. Um, a lot of people have supported me, and I think my message is uh, don't, don't keep putting off what you really want to do, because, you know, I think medicine reminds us that life is short and there's no guarantee for tomorrow, so just live each day to the fullest, and which is what I've been trying to do. Absolutely. I mean, to the fullest, I mean, I got chills again, oh, but um, to the fullest, it's an understatement, and it's just so amazing that you continue to do it that, you know, yes, I love the fact how you grow with it, just like a parent. I mean, you don't have all the manual of how it's supposed to do, but you evolve and you grow. And I think even your art as an artist, you can tell us, I mean, sometimes I feel people really get stuck in, oh, I just love the artist for that. But then the artist too evolves and they change and your art changes. And, you know, we'll share some of it too. And, it, you know, it, it has different facets, different moods, different, you know, things behind it. Um, so maybe actually, We'll uh, share in a second, but you know, for you, I know it's something that you felt that was in your DNA, you had to do, you wanted to do, you knew all along it was gonna be combined at some point, but when you are maybe sitting down to do a piece, like what is it for you? Is it something that you want to express? Is it healing for you? How does it work the process of an artist when you're sit sitting down to create your masterpieces? Well, first part is I have to shift from physician mindset to artist mindset, which is quite a challenge because as a physician, we have to be analytical exact and otherwise even being off by a milligram in medicine could have devastating uh, consequences. And so to, to be doing that all day and then shifting that to artist mindset. So I need a transition period. And so that often is music. Uh, so I would either play music or listen to music. Um, and then uh, I need to just say to myself, there are no rules, I can't fail. Um, and whereas in medicine, I think the, we are so disciplined that we need to be so precise. Uh, there are a lot of rules, guidelines to follow, but you have to let go of that all as an artist to make an impact. I want my art to be free. Mm -hmm. I don't want to follow a lot of rules. I, I am by nature a, a kind of risk averse person. I've lived a very safe uh, life, uh, taking very le relatively little risks. But as an artist, I think to make an impact, um, I need to push my limits and just uh, not be afraid to try something new, something that I could, I might fail, but not be afraid. And I think that's part of my message is to, uh, to, to, to be brave, to take that chance. Yeah, and you're really, really talking about 
<laughs> like the left brain and the right brain, right? Like, <laughs> especially, you know, medicine, we're kind of left brain, you know, all the analytic and yeah, we have to be exact and we have to know the exact dose for the medication and not overdose, you know, if we're running a code or something like that. It has to be precise. But in the other brain, when you are, I mean, you're talking about creativity and intuition and just flowing. And I love that part where, you know, you really have that transition part where you, you don't just come in from seeing 100 patients and like start painting. It doesn't work like that for you. You have to really transition to the music and the frequency, the flow to get in a state in your flow state, really, to then really get tap into that right brain, that creative brain, and then to start, you know, just exploring and being brave and realizing, yeah, it's not going to be exact. I got to let go of that sort of more perfectionism mindset from medicine and just let it flow. And you touched upon something beautiful, which is when you're letting go of that attachment of success, whatever that is, that really is when, you know, you do succeed, when you let go of an attachment of an outcome, whether it's art or anything else, but I think you can apply mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. to life. You know, when you let go of that, you know, you're going to get so many followers or so many things and you just enjoy that process you really are talking about mindfulness, about being mindful of the, your creation in that moment. And then the outcome is always just magical, I think. So do you feel like when you are, you know, you have transitioned with music or whatever helped you, and then now you're doing your painting, is that a time for really mindfulness, for really almost a meditative state where you are just really present at that moment? Is that something like that for you? Or how is your process when you are there creating now? Yeah, it's a different, completely different state. Again, I think for me, uh, from going from physician mindset to artist mindset is, is much harder than coming out of the studio and back to seeing patients. That part is very easy for me mm -hmm. uh, because I'm used to doing that. But the other way, there's a time period where I really have to just let go of a lot of uh, my rules. And, and so... For that reason, I think most of my paintings done after midnight when every, uh, everything is quiet, that it's easier to just stay in that zone. Um, I know that lack of sleep isn't best for me, but it is really the best time to be painting is after midnight. Oh, I <laughs> love it. I love it. Yeah, we all have our zones of genius or times of genius. And it's nice that, you know, that is your sort of quiet time. Maybe when you're, you know, your kids were younger, definitely when my kids are asleep, I do a lot of work. And so that's when I, you know, read or write is when they're asleep. So uh, I think when you have all the roles, especially as a mother, that is a quiet time where, you know, you can be creative and let go and, and yeah, have that stillness. So I love that you, you do that at that time. Now, you know, you really, now I know you are, you are, and may correct me if I'm wrong or not, you really have focused a little bit more now into doing commission pieces for physicians. Is that something you kind of had always been doing? Did it evolve and why in the COVID have anything to do with us? Because uh, I think that was just really special what you've done to commission these pieces for, you know, for some, and why did that morph into that? What happened there? So a lot of physicians uh, usually uh, approach me online and then, uh, and then want a specific piece. And sometimes that piece is already sold. So a lot of my pieces are already sold. And they I would say, okay, I would like this piece, but on a bigger scale, or I would want it uh, maybe vertically instead of horizontally. And, and so, uh, you know, I accommodate that and it's been fun. It's really been fun to accommodate, to meet visions from really all over because my art gets shipped to, coast to coast and abroad. And uh, right now I'm in the process of shipping a piece to a female plastic surgeon in um, Belgium. And okay. again, uh, she already bought a piece and now there's a second piece. And, and so I've met some really amazing people and, but it's not easy for me to kind of let go of my painting because each piece is like a child. Mm -hmm. And so I put my heart and soul into each piece. So um, initially, then I had a hard time, but I, it's gotten a little bit easier. I realized that when you raise children, you raise them so that they fly, they, they, they leave home, they become independent, they go out there to contribute to whatever they're born to do. And so I feel like my painting sh uh, shouldn't stay at my studio, they, sh they should go out to the viewers um, so that it, you know, so their paintings will bring 
you know, joy and beauty to, in their lives. And I received uh, lots of just amazing feedback from the buyers um, all over. So it's been, it's been a really heartwarming experience. Yeah, it's always so amazing, you know, most, you know, so a lot of these artists, you know, they pass away. So there are, you know, they're not around to tell us how they feel when their art goes somewhere. And is it easy or hard to detach or, you know, because it's so important that what you mentioned, you know, these are really something that you spend your time, you really pour your energy, your love. And it's sort of like that child that like goes out of the nest, you know, but you have to let them fly, just like you said. And, you know, you are too. And it, it touches so many lives because I really think that art is, you know, is healing and, it, it, you know, there's a recent study about uh, Harvard, what to do to be happy, seven things you can do. And it really is making your surroundings, you know, happy, whether it's, you know, candles or, you know, music or art really didn't mention, but it really is when you make your home beautiful with whether it's art or, or anything like that, you really feel much different. You know, you really <laughs> want to make your workspace, your bedroom to be something that uh, you feel relaxed, you feel you know, joyful, you feel excited, calm. And I think a lot of your paintings do have that essence. And actually, now that we talk about, I want to share some of them uh, because I do think that they capture this essence of peace and of, you know, just, I don't know, like freedom, um, especially the ones about the ocean. To me, I really feel yeah. that freedom in it. Um, that, that's what I get in the, the ocean lover. So I'm going to share them so people can see them because they're just quite beautiful. And can you see them well, Susie? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. That's, mm -hmm. So this, tell me, tell me a little bit about this piece. Cause I mean, this, these are one of my favorites, but I mean, I, you probably shouldn't have favorites. I don't know, but I love this. And the colors is kind of very similar to what you're wearing today, which is one of your pieces, your, your dress or your shirt you're wearing. And the colors are so rich and beautiful with the turquoise and the blue and sort of this gold. So tell us about this piece. I just find it just beautiful. So up until just, you know, before the pandemic, all my pieces were full colors. Uh -huh. But uh, during pandemic, you know, none of us were able to travel like the way we used to. And so especially that year one, uh, the first year of pandemic, I really missed uh, going to the city ocean. And, and so I created one piece uh, and then it just went viral. And so I created another piece in similar ocean theme and it kept on, uh, getting great reviews and uh, it became probably and so I created more and I think I created probably about, about 100 pieces oh and many of them sold it's probably my best selling categories of my, my art and um, people just find that really peaceful it takes them to another place uh, that they want to be and um, so now I do a, quite a bit of ocean lovers and in addition to full colors, of course. Yeah, and so yeah. this dress that I'm wearing is what is, is one of my uh, art that's printed in a, in a dress. It's beautiful. Yeah, I love it. I, I love the colors. Like I said, I mean, I, I love aqua too and blue, as you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a little biased because I love this color scheme. And, and my house is actually aqua. Um, so I, I do love that. So this is just a beautiful, and this one, tell me a little bit about this, this piece. So she's one of the female physicians who came to me and she wanted to, uh, me to create some, uh, her portrait for her parents. Oh, okay. so yeah, this is actually a full size 24 by 36. It's a large piece and I painted it and we shipped it uh, to Asia. Amazing. I <laughs> to, love to the color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the colors are amazing, vibrant. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. I love this piece too. And tell, tell us about this one. So, you know, music has been a big part of my life. Um, I play piano and, uh, and, you know, my kids play a lot of different types of music. And so uh, I've got a whole section for music lovers and music brings joy and music uh, keeps us uh, uh, grounded, I think. And, and uh, music brings people together and so, yeah, so that's how uh, this piece got created. I love it. Yeah, I mean, music is so powerful. It definitely, I think when we're physicians feeling a little burned out, I mean, I think it's something easy to kind of lift our mood or, you know, maybe rock it out or like shake it out or, you know, movement is so important, whether it's your body, your mind, you know, that, that's really, really helpful. So I think incorporating that, you know, it's just a nice transition, not just to get to a point like you to get creative in your creative zone, but I think for 
people that are feeling overwhelmed or that, you know, maybe put like your favorite songs I used to love and have a little dance party. And I think, you know, it can take 15 seconds, but you're going to feel much better the mood. So I think that, you know, it's really meaningful that you wanted to incorporate that in, in your piece. And what about this one? This, this is also kind of fun one. Yeah, so this piece initially was inspired by my son. My son is studying aerospace engineering. Ah, yeah. And, and so, you know, he talks so much about space and I got just fascinated by space. And, uh, and then it just reminds us how small our life is in the vast you know, universe. And, and yet, uh, even that during that short life, if it's well lived, I think we, one life could make all the difference. So yeah, beautiful. It, it gets it. me to kind of uh, it. It gets keeps me grounded. And since then, um, I create a number of pieces in that space theme, and um, a number of them have been sold. And so I just love not just depicting exact universe, but just be creative with it. Just bring a lot of joy to to the viewers yeah i love i mean you, i love that splash of the pink um you know there's like a little bit of the aqua in there too but yeah i definitely felt the space theme i didn't know it was but i felt that space theme but with a little bit of you know vibrance and yeah you're right like it's so expansive and the abundance of the universe um i love so this one this one is sold but you've created more is that correct this one is already sold but so this one is not sold the other ones ah. that are okay amazing that are in that theme or so, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And how big is this piece? So this piece is uh, 30 by 40. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, okay. Mm -hmm. Take your nips. <laughs> you know, let's not all fight for this one. This is beautiful, I love this one. Oh, okay, this is another fantastic one. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one of the really popular stuff that went viral, just part of the, the, the ones or, uh, this is beautiful too. So tell us about this. This is uh, called Ocean Peace. Again, the flow of ocean. Again, I want uh, people to experience that freedom to be themselves, uh, to be authentic and to really live the life they want to live. And so, um, so I wanted to just make sure that it's just totally flowing and literally in that piece, I'm not using the brush at all. I'm dropping the paint. I'm letting things flow into it. Um, and so therefore I can never create uh, the same. same, same, because there's a lot of spontaneity. And so this uh, went to a physician in North Dakota um, who, who loved the, this theme and bought a set of, of paintings. So yeah, this, you is also, this is 48 by 36, so it's big. Uh, I love yeah. it, yeah, I love it. Um, I think you also told me before that you actually have one of the physicians like decorate their whole office with all your art, like every, right? right? I mean, it's amazing, right. it's just perfect. I mean, that's what you gotta do because it's so beautiful. You can't just get one piece, <laughs> you need multiple pieces. This one, yeah, this is really, I feel that flow, that freedom, but there's a little bit of that goldy, sparkly. And I'm sure in person, this is just fantastic. Um, and then what, what what's this one? Tell us a little bit about this. Place. This is an imaginary uh, city and I love uh, sunset. And so I have quite a few paintings on sunset and it just it just shows a passion for, for life. Oh yeah, um, the reds, the reds are like cool, fiery and you know beautiful. I love that one. And tell us about this one or these ones because it's four, right? Yeah, so this are the close-ups of a piece that went to uh, uh, another female physician in California, actually. And so she wanted a piece above her bed. And, mm -hmm. um, and so it was going to be kind of, uh, uh, it was going to be wide, but narrow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we love the close-up of these. So uh, this is a collage of the close-up of that one big piece. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. This one's also just, I mean, the colors, you're still keeping that turquoise, but you have these magentas and they have the dark. I mean, this is just, yeah, I love this one too. Oh, and this is kind of like what you have in the back with the piano, it's just incorporating all of it and like flowy and like the rain. But tell us, I don't know anything about it, but, but I love this one too. Tell me. Again, it's, I thought about a pianist just going, sitting and just going wild with some impromptu piece and just, yeah. Uh, whatever inspired her. So um, it's 
I thought about like a music note just flowing from the sky and just and inspiring her to create whatever at that moment. So and this um, one is sold you, or this one is still available? This one is available. I believe this is available, but I have sold the other version of this as well. So okay. Yeah, yeah I love that. I think that's all I got for, for this one. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're just magical and lovely. Um, th these are just so pretty. And yeah, if you are you know, physician or anybody that wants to commission a special one that is not available anymore, you can always, you know, contact Dr. Sharp and let her know, you know, what you're thinking and, you know, she can just make it just absolutely magical. So, I mean, I'm glad that we got to share that because people really see it, feel it, and you can tell us like why you created it, what's behind it, um, which is always, you know, fun, Not more than just knowing about the title, you know, what really came behind it makes it so fun. So, and then I know you're super busy, you are doing lots of shows and you always have it, but what's coming up for you for show wise, where are you going to be? What are you uh, sharing, selling, presenting? Tell us about what's coming up for you. So I just finished the show in Madrid uh, about a, two weeks ago. Okay. And then uh, next show is in a month in Paris. So it's brand new pieces that, uh, that I'm in the process of creating. And, and then what's fun is I get go back to my favorite city with art. And so it's my second show in Paris. So I'm really excited about that. And it will be a huge international level show again. So yeah, amazing, amazing. And, you know, you really touched on a lot of really great themes throughout that I hope people really pick up, um, you know, sort of subtle, sort of, sort of not so subtle, which was, you know, rekindling your passion, making time for your passion, making time for things that were always something that you loved, you know, whether you were before medicine, during medicine, maybe you kind of started stuff and not do. And I think this is a really important message, you know, whether you're in medicine or not in medicine, because it's not burnout that is affecting only physicians. I mean, it's in chronic stress, it's in any field. And whether you're an accountant or a pilot or a physician, I think that it's really important to get back to those things that fuel you, whether again, it's art or music or fixing motorcycles or whatever it is, because that really is gonna make you feel enthusiasm and excitement and really get that chatter in our brain that we always have where we're worried about the past or catastrophizing about the future and really make you present in that moment, whatever activity you're doing. And I think that's really important to stop the stress, stop the little chatter, and really get you in a zone of calm and peace. So I really love that you shared that you kind of knew it, but you really made time to do that. And I hope that whoever is listening or is here today really, you know, is not, if they're not doing that in their life now, really try to incorporate that. Because I think that's a great way out of the stress cascade and just getting you, you know, in a different place. Yeah, I think we all need that, something we could just be passionate about, uh, and more than one thing sometimes, I think, uh, because I think medicine constantly reminds us that there is no guarantee for tomorrow, and I think, uh, you know, that's why uh, that it's important to live each day to the fullest. Absolutely, yeah, we never know, you know, when we're going to get hit by the bus or we get a cancer diagnosis or anything. And, you know, we should not wait for that cancer diagnosis to change your life or to right. change our priorities. Mm -hmm. I just recently had a patient who was very stressed out all the time and he had um, stomach cancer diagnosis. And then I saw him after about, you know, three, four months after, and he was like a completely changed man. I mean, he was so calm and so like go with the flow, Hakuna Matata. And I'm like, what's going on? He's like, well, doc, you know, when you get the cancer diagnosis, you sort of change your priorities in life. And mm -hmm. little, right. things, little things don't bother you anymore as they used to. And that's absolutely true. But I just, you know, we don't have to wait to that point to get that cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. to make that priority in your life mm -hmm. um, or to be in complete burnout and you know or be depressed anxious or having suicidal thoughts as physicians to mm -hmm. say like this is like the time you know we mm -hmm. want to really start working on it before we're at that place where we're feeling hopeless mm -hmm. yeah so I, I love that you know really that it's such an important point that you made and you know the other point that was so powerful was like attachment attachment is is huge 
uh, for, for any outcome, for anything that you do, because when you do anything with passion, like you have with your art, you are pouring your soul into your pieces. You know, you, you have to like let go of like, what was going to become of it? Are you going to be, you know, a, a famous and it shows of this? It just, I think the universe is abundant and, and it just kind of always works itself out and it works for us. And all these people gravitate to you and to your art because they feel that passion. They see that authenticity, that joy, that love in it. And that's why it always kind of works out because there's joy, love, and light and freedom in your pieces and in you and your being. I mean, the art is just a extension of your being, I really think. But but I think that's why it's so magical because you have those ingredients that are like palpable to me, you know, and I think hopefully to everybody here that is, you know, in this talk today. Yeah, so I think of it, it's a journey, but it's an evolving journey. So a lot of my pieces are subtitled uh, with the journey in the, in the name. And uh, so this particular piece. Uh, oh yeah, show us. Let's see. Oh yeah. It's uh, titled uh, Spiritual Journey. And it's full color. It's almost, uh, there's a lot of texture involved there. Um, but the I had a couple of different versions of that piece. Because... Sharp, you're kind of, sorry, I don't interrupt you, but your microphone is rubbing something. So it kind of really scratches. So just be careful with your microphone. Okay. Okay, perfect. But yeah, show us a little bit again because it's so pretty. I want to have everybody really see it. It's beautiful. Let's see. Oh um, yeah, I can see the texture of it. You know, like the layers of it. Yeah. Is that oil or what is that? What, what did you use for it's that? Acrylic. It's acrylic. Acrylic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. and so if you think about it, there are a lot of the some darkness there, but. I think about it on my own journey where all the things that I went through to be where I am. Uh, and then at the end, we find a kind of a happy place in the center. And I think all of us, you know, go through life and there's a lot of things that life throws at you that are unexpected, okay? And it kind of, uh, you have to sometimes take detour to get to get back to where you meant to go. And, and then hopefully we're all arrive in some place where we could be authentic and be, you know, at peace with ourselves, with our, our life. So uh, this is called uh, spiritual journey. It went to uh, local pediatrician. So I'm really kind of in part really happy because, uh, as I said, like uh, sending art away is like sending a child. And this one I get to see it uh, because she's local. Yeah, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, I actually love that. The center part, I mean, it's sort of, you said it was a happy place, but actually it's like the yellow, the, the, it's like the light, which I think mm -hmm. is so symbolic. I mean, you call it mm -hmm. a happy place, but really the center of your piece is this really bright light of yellow, which mm -hmm. I think that is like what we all are inside. It's like the light inside of us that we all have. Um, mm -hmm. That is sometimes, yeah, buried with all the things outside and things that happen in the ego. And it reminds me actually of, um, you know, Dr. Williams is here, Nika, and, you know, she really talks about the treasure inside, like we're filled with treasures. And I really think this treasure, like the light and, you know, like your soul, your, your deep connection. So I think when you say the soul journey, it's, I mean, it's so beautifully done because it really encompasses the light in the center of us. It's just mm -hmm. beautiful. Absolutely. And, you know, and she, uh, yeah. And, and also to hear from her directly what this painting means to her. And she was uh, really graceful enough to let me loan a piece to, so I could show in this, uh, in, in, in this program. And uh, later in the week, I'm doing a TV program and uh, so I'll, I'll get to show it there as well. But uh, I'll be creating a party more pieces like this. I love that. I mean, that was Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. I love the textures and I just love like sort of like the chaos, but it's in the middle. Oh, it's so powerful. And I know you have a few more. So do you want to show us some more that you have at home that are? Sure. Upstairs? Okay. So. Oh yeah. Look at those. Yeah, okay. So the, yeah, I, I like doing portraits as well, but again, I don't want to do a realistic because there are a lot of other talented artists who could make it exactly like that person. I want to sort of accentuate the, yeah, the message of that person with bold uh, boldness. Yeah, bold and the colors and, you know, yeah, it's bright. All of them are bright, but 
uh, it still is a beautiful, um, you know, portrait, regardless of people can do it or not. It's still, you know, the skill wise is beautiful and the color choices and, you know, the, the whole, the, the highlight of the face is beautiful. I love that one. And so is that one available or is that your baby at home or what's going on with this one? Can people uh, This one is at the student, so up <laughs> because JFK is not alive, so he's not, there isn't a person running. But anyway, um, the, you know, one of the questions that I'm often asked is that how long does it take for me to complete like, a large piece? Uh -huh. And I said, about, uh, about the time that it takes to see about 50 patients. So I was. <laughs> Which, um, which for some people maybe one day, for some people maybe three days. So <laughs> that could vary. <laughs> and then um, these especially others. Uh, medical professionals play in our society, especially during the challenge. Okay. Oh yeah. This one's so yeah. And this one has like a resin coat on it. Is that what it has? Oh, hold on. I think I muted you by mistake. Give me a second, Susie. Sorry. I need to unmute you, or maybe I. Did I mute you or you mute it? Give me a second. Is that? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, that's... okay. Go ahead. So this one has resin coat on top of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so big waves. This was very popular. So I've actually created a couple of versions of it. And, um, and then uh, this is the piece that, uh, well, it's kind of dark on, on the picture, but this is a piece where my, my, the dress that I'm wearing Mm -hmm. this is from, from this piece. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I love that. You, I mean, you're so dynamic and you know, so many different things. You have the ones with the resin, uh, you have the acrylic with the texture, you have the portraits, um, you have the ones incorporating music, the sunset, the space. I mean, it's so, you know, like dynamic. It's not just one in, in a period. I mean, you really have like so many different facets. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the time period was, for all these were they you know certain like the blue period and the, the different one or were these just kind of all contemporary how was the time it's all contemporary actually but i think it, it's a bit of an internist in me who likes the variety of it and then so it's like you know when i was deciding which field to go into internal medicine drew me out, uh, drew it me in and because i love the variety uh, of ah. doing yeah so I think having a many different styles and art that goes with who I am. Absolutely. Yeah. I really, you really, you know, the art captures who you are or you capture the art, you know, either way, but, but yeah, I mean, some artists feel, you know, they have their period, they'll do the ocean for, you know, years or months and they stay there. And then maybe as they evolve or they go through whatever emotional thing and they're expressing a different thing, then they move to the portrait. But for you, these have been, contemporary at the same time doing all these different uh, styles, different techniques, uh, you know, at the same time, which is really, you know, quite amazing. Like I said, usually we see the evolution of an artist as they go through their phases and you're just doing it all at the same time, which is amazing. I love that. So, I mean, that, is there anything else I mean, that, you know, again, we talked about these amazing concepts that you probably didn't think were there, but they are there and these messages of, the passion of letting go of being brave. I mean, is there other, you know, messages you want to give people here that are listening that you think is really important that they remember or they take away from today, whether it's from art or just from like these life lessons? Is there something you want to share with them? So one of the things that I just recently committed to is use my art proceeds to do something good. Um, and uh, the art has never been really about me, but I think of my uh, artistic talent as a gift. Oh, it's it a free gift that I received. And I, I feel uh, that I need to do something with it for, for, the, the, for the world. And uh, so I, one of the things I just recently decided is, is to purchase about like 500 copies of um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's uh, children's biography. Uh, uh, and she is one of my heroes. Amazing and woman. We were just there to, uh, to send it to girl, young girls uh, in impoverished part of the world so that they get to hear about her legacy, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's legacy, uh, what she has done for you know, girls and women uh, in, in this country and all, all over the world uh, so that they have a chance to dream big. Um, and, uh, and 
Yeah, I love that. And yeah. I love that you share that you're going to do that. And then you came with this idea in the shower, which is sort of my creativity portal. Like when I'm in the shower, the hot shower, that's where I actually, you know, I ride. And when I ride it, like it all comes when I'm in the shower or washing dishes. Uh, when I'm connected to hot water, to me, that's where I get ideas. And I love that for you, you were, you know, in the shower thought of this. And it's so powerful to, again, know that these gifts, you know, are given to you or, or, or you know, you have them and you use your skill, you know, not only as a physician, but as an artist to, to help so many, not only the ones receiving your art and enjoying their art, whether there's their home or their office, but also using all the, a lot of the proceeds from your art that you sell to give the gift of a book, which is so powerful, to give the gift of inspiration of a powerful woman that really changed, you know, so much and stood for so much and that you give that and a book is something that, you know, you reread and you can look, look again and is with you, you know, for a long time, just like art, but what a powerful thing. And again, just shows the depth of, you know, your, your being and your love and your light that again, just like touches everywhere um, that you kind of put your, your love to. And it's amazing. And it's just, again, so powerful and really the essence of you. So I'm glad that you shared that with people so they know, um, they understand just, you know, just your death um, and just what a powerful thing to do. And so I want to make sure people that saw the art today, um, that saw some of the paintings at your home that you showcase, and obviously they can go to the shows and um, Milan or Paris or wherever you're doing a show, but they want to find out more of, you know, how do they contact you? Where are you? I mean, you're everywhere, but where can they really find you? Share that with everybody so they can contact you, talk about the art, get a piece, two pieces, maybe three. <laughs> so where, where are you, Dr. Sharp? Where can they find you? So easiest place to find me is my website. is Susie uh, Sharp at dot net, Susie Sharp dot net, my first name, last name dot net. Okay. I'm on Facebook um, and I'm on Instagram, so I'm easy to find. Correct. Yeah, and I put down the notes there, the website, which is sushi sharp dot net. Again, she has her pieces, all the different, um, the, the ocean, the, the music lovers, all the different categories. Again, look at some of the things. If, if it's already sold, maybe contact her to say, oh, I want to be a little bit like this or like this big, um, the maybe the bigger the better, but, you know, to fit your home or your office or, you know, anywhere you want to put this art. And yeah, beautiful things on Instagram as well. The yes, she's on Facebook and her website. And, you know, just really, uh, I'm just so, so thankful that you were able to share this in your home with your beautiful grand piano is amazing and your art and your story. So people you know, realize that, you know, you can do anything. I think you didn't really say it, but you can, you can, you're living your life to the fullest, but you can do whatever you set your mind to. You had this thought long ago and you made it a reality because that was your intention. You follow your passion and, you know, then, you know, it's just magic after that, when you put the work and when you really prioritize to put all that effort and all that love into something and it's just magical and it always works out. So thank you for sharing your gifts, your art, your being, your wonderful clothes, your eye makeup is so cute, everything about you. And, you know, thank you everybody for coming today. Again, contact her, her. Um, you know, Physician Coach Report is here for any physician. So please check us out. Please share with anybody that could benefit that is struggling. We lose 400 physicians per year plus. Um, to suicide. So this is not something we want physicians to be in or dealing with or suffering with. And we're not alone. You know, burnout is real, but we can get out of it. We can get through it. We can use it as a, you know, growth and as something to really help us grow and change. And so I hope that if you are struggling or know somebody that is, you can share our research with them or share a beautiful art piece that can uplift them. Even if you don't buy it, just you know, look at it online and enjoy it because it's just really straight from source your gift. So um, thank you so much, everybody that came. You can watch the replay. We'll put it um, and share it in case you can catch all of it or you want to share with anybody. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.